Hi, my name is Dan Lynch. I'm a wildlife education specialist with the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Today we're going to talk about skull identification. We're going to talk about relative size of skulls, we're going to talk about eye placements, and we're going to talk about tooth identification. As far as relative size goes, in Pennsylvania we've got some huge skulls. One of the biggest might be something like this elk. Uh, this elk is probably one and a half the size of a football, um, and uh, so that's a really big skull. We've got some smaller skulls. Both of these are about the size of a baseball. We've got an otter, we've got a fox, but we've got skulls of mammals like a bat that weigh you know, a quarter of an ounce and might be smaller than a dime. So we've got some real variety in our skull relative sizes. So when you look at a skull and you're looking at eye placement, it, uh, depending on where those eyes are, kind of gives you an idea as to whether or not the animal is normally a predator or a prey. So let's look at this really big skull right here. Um, and you can see from this particular skull, and if you look from the back and from the front, that those eyes are definitely on the side. They give this animal the ability to see in the front and probably all the way back at this angle right here, uh, because this animal is definitely a prey species. So this is an elk. And even though it's a really huge animal in Pennsylvania, they are still considered a prey species. Now compare that to a skull like this. When you look at this skull and you look straight ahead, you see these two eyes are right in the very front. So this animal is seeing, for the most part, directly in front, has great uh, depth perception, kind of like we do. Our eyes are in the front. And so this is definitely a predator uh, skull, and this particular one happens to be a bobcat. In this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the animal's teeth. So they have four different types of teeth. They have incisors, they have canines, they have premolars, and they have molars. So let's start with the elk. The elk is considered a herbivore. Uh, the elk has molars on the bottom, on, on, the, on the top part of the skull, and the first three are considered the premolars, and the last three are considered the molars. They have a hard plate on the top with no teeth on the very front. Um, if this particular skull was complete, it would have two ivory teeth sticking out here, and so they're considered the canines, ivories, tuskers. So the, the molars themselves are used for grinding. And let's look at the lower part of the jaw. So in the lower part, you can see the three premolars and the three molars, and you can see the incisors. So the incisors are used for nipping things off like twigs and grass, and then the molars are used for grinding them up. And the elk is considered a herbivore. Now we'll take a look at the black bear. So the black bear has got incisors in the front, it's got canines, He's got molars in the very front that are considered the premolars, and then he's got pretty flat molars similar to ours, similar to humans in the back. So the incisors are used for nipping and things off. The canines are used for grasping and tearing and possibly killing prey. And then the molars, both the pre and the regular molars, are used for grinding its food up. And the bear is considered an omnivore. Last skull that I'm going to show and talk about teeth would be the bobcat. So the bobcat also has small incisors in the front, has these long, sharp, curved canines, and has molars, but the molars are all pointed. So that kind of tells you that this animal is a carnivore. So he uses those incisors for nipping. He uses those canines for grabbing hold and holding on to prey and or killing it and, and tearing meat. And then for grinding things up, both meat and bones, he uses those molars in the back. And the first one would pretty much be considered a premolar. We're going to talk about the different parts of a skull by using this bear skull. The very top of the bear skull is called the sagittal crest. It ends in this tiny little protrusion in the back here. The longer and wider that is, the more the muscles and the jaw will attach and allow this animal to have very, very strong crunching power on bones and meat. Going forward here, you'll see that there are orbits. The orbits are where the eyes are. In a bear, they're a predator, so they're facing forward. Everything from the orbits to the very front of the jaw, which is called the premaxilla, is called the rostrum or the muzzle. This is all the muscle, the muzzle up here. Above the teeth here is called the maxilla, the top part of the jaw. This is called the zygomatic arch, which is like the cheekbone. There is an earbud right here. 
turn the skull in the back and you'll see this occipital ridge that runs all the way in the very back. And this hole right here is where the spinal cord would come out. We flip it over and look at some of the teeth. They have incisors in the front, very strong, powerful canines, premolars that are pointed. And then this first, this molar right here is pointed, but they start to flatten out at the very back. And that's because the bear is an omnivore. So it has flattened molars in the very back for grinding plants. Looking at the lower jaw, there is incisors in the front, canines, premolars, and very flattened molars in the back. The lower jaw is also called the ramus. So those are the parts of a bear skull. We're going to talk about this parts of the deer skull. So in the very top part of the skull, the very back is called the brain case, which protects the brain. The bone that runs out here is the nasal bone. You can see the orbit where the eyes are, and on a deer, they're on each side. So this is indicative of a prey species. The very tip of the skull is called the premaxilla. The maxilla is the jaw part above the teeth. The hole right here is called the ear bone. This line right here is called the occipital ridge, and this hole is where the brain uh, stem and the spinal cord would come out of. You flip it over, you look in the very front, there's a hard palate with no teeth. Then there are three premolars and three molars on this particular deer skull. In the bottom part of the deer jaw, in the front there are six incisors, and the one on each end is actually considered a canine. Then the space between those teeth and the, mol the premolars is called a diastema. Many animals have a space in between their front teeth and their molars, and that again is called a diastema. The deer then has three premolars and three molars in the back. The lower part of the jaw is called the ramus, and that's the deer jaw. So now, basically, you're given a skull, and you're trying to figure out what kind of skull it is. So one thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do is look at relative size. So the skull we have here today is in front of this ruler, and you can see it's almost 12 inches long. So that's a pretty big animal. It's 12 inches long. Um, you know, you're, you're going to eliminate a lot of critters like a fox or a possum because this thing is way too big. So that's the first clue. Second thing is we're going to look at eye placement. So you can look here on this skull, and you can see that the eyes are directly on the sides. So now you already know that there's a really good chance that this animal is prey animal. And then we're gonna look at teeth. So we flip this thing over and we take a look. And you can see there's no teeth on the front, on, that, on the palate. And then there's no teeth from the front all the way to what looks like molars. So we got three premolars and three full uh, adult molars. So it's pretty obvious to me now that this is a deer. Okay, so now we've moved on to another skull. One of the things you want to think about now is that size isn't always the determining factor of what an animal is. Um, but this one here, we're looking at maybe four inches long, four to five inches long. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to look at. Then we're going to look at the eye placement again. And this particular one, the eyes are pretty much... Those orbits are kind of in the front, so he's kind of facing forward right there. So then we want to look at some other things. Uh, one of the things that we talked about before was this sagittal crest. So this guy's here, he's got a really big sagittal crest, which means his, his jaws are really strong for breaking things like, say, bones and meat and things like that. Then we want to look at those teeth. This guy's got a lot of teeth. He's got incisors, he's got canines. He's got lots of molars. The ones in the very, very back look a little bit flattened. So we're going to go with an omnivore. And this guy happens to be a possum. Now let's take a look at this critter. Um, again, this one is maybe five inches long. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to look at is the size. Um, we're also going to look and see that this animal is very, very flat on the top. That might have a clue to, to the way the animal survives or eats. Um, that's one thing we want to look at. Then we want to look at eye placement, totally in the front. This guy's got his eyes right in the front. He's definitely a predator. Um, then let's take a look at these teeth. So we'll flip them over here so you can see both. He's got 
incisors in the front. He's got some pretty powerful looking uh, canines. Then he's got molars and they are pointed all the way to the back. Same thing on the other, on the other side on the bottom. They're pointed all the way to the back. So this guy is an otter. So let's take a look at this skull. You see it's about four inches long. Turn it to the side. You see that the eye placement is on the side. And so that's indicative of a prey species. Then if you look at this teeth, you'll see that they've got huge incisors in the front, top and bottom. And then they've got completely flat molars and they're missing canines. That definitely shows that this is a herbivore, and in this case, it is a groundhog or woodchuck. This skull is a little bit smaller in relative size than the, some of the others that I was showing you. This is probably about two and a half inches long. You tilt it from the side, and you'll see it's got huge eye sockets on the side. So that shows you that it's a prey species. You flip it and open it up and take a look at those teeth you'll see that there are incisors on the front and back. If you look very closely, there's actually a second set of incisors just on inside the large set that's on the front. You'll see there's no canines, completely flat molars, front and back. And with the relative size and the fact that this looks like a prey species, this is a cottontail rabbit. Relative size of this skull shows that it's just a little over an inch long. Turn it to the side, you'll see that there are, the eye sockets are definitely on the side, giving it the appearance of being a prey species. Flip it open and take a look at the teeth. You'll see that they have incisors on the front and back, and these are kind of stained orange. And they have completely flat molars, kind of hard to see, I have to turn them to the side there, and no canines. This particular skull is from a chipmunk. So this skull is about three inches long. And if you look, you will see that these eyes face forward on this guy right here. And they're slightly off to the side, but they do face forward. Uh, this animal is much more of a predator species. Not that animals don't prey on it, but they he's most mostly a predator species. Um, if you open, open up and take a look at these teeth, you'll see that <clears throat> he has incisors, canines, uh, pointed molars, but the very back ones are slightly flattened right here. Um, this guy is a skunk. And one of the ways that I help determine that is that he's got kind of that, kind of a rounded top of the head, kind of a very tiny little football shape, um, and usually a pretty big, nasal opening right here. So that is the skunk. The skull is a little over four and a half inches long. It's very round, kind of shaped like a, kind of like a baseball or a softball. Huge eye sockets facing forward. So this is definitely a predator species. Flip open these the skull and take a look at the teeth. You see we've got incisors here, very sharp canines and pointed molars all the way to the back. If you see how they are pointed all the way to the back, no flattening here at all. Uh, same with the front and, the, and the, the top and the bottom. So this is definitely a predator species. Um, and this particular skull is the bobcat. The skull is also about four inches long. Tilt it to the side so you can take a look at it. You'll see that it's probably looks like the size of a baseball. And if you look, uh, you will see that the eye sockets, which are here, are on the sides. This is definitely a prey species. Um, when you look at the teeth, notice that they have these large stained incisors on the top and the bottom. They have completely flat molars and no canines. So some people may think this is a beaver, but the way to tell the difference between the beaver and what this is is a porcupine is to look at these two holes in the front. These holes uh, are not found on a beaver. So when you see that, that is a quick giveaway that that is a porcupine. 
So this really tiny skull um, is long and very, very flat. It's probably a little over an inch long. And a, the eye sockets are on the front of this, but the eyes are really not a factor in this particular critter because he's constantly moving around in the dark, underground, and really doesn't use his eyes very much at all. But if you look at these teeth, there are lots of teeth in here. They're very, very sharp um, and pointed. This guy is a predator, and this guy is a mole. At about two inches long, this particular skull has eye sockets that are directly on the sides. So this is definitely a prey species. When you open it up and look at these stained incisor teeth on the top and bottom and completely flat molars. Okay, so the, and there's no canines. This particular skull is a gray squirrel. This particular skull is about two inches long. Tilt it from the side. You'll see that the eye sockets, this animal has eyes on the side prey species. Open it up and take a look at these stained uh, incisor teeth on the front, missing canines, completely flattened molars. Size giving this thing away is that this is a muskrat. The skull's about four inches long, kind of rounded at the top. Eyes facing forward, so it's a predator species. Take a look at the teeth. You see that there are incisors in the front, canines, and some pretty sharp premolars. But then when you get to the very back, these last two on each side are kind of flattened. So this is indicative of an omnivore, very common species that we have in Pennsylvania. This is the raccoon. These two skulls are very similar. They are both predator species. They both have eyes that are in the front, of their skull. And their teeth are also very similar in that they both have incisors in the front, canines, the premolars and, and the first molar is very sharp, but the last two are kind of flattened on both critters. And so that's indicative of an omnivore. Now, to tell the two foxes apart, what you need to know is you need to know the genus of them. The genus of the red fox is Vulpes with a V. So if you look at the shape on the top of that skull, you'll see it's in the letter V. And the genus of the gray fox is Eurocyon with a U. So you can see the shape of that on the top of that skull. So it's a really good way to tell the difference between red fox and gray fox. These particular skulls, the red's a little bit bigger, but that's not always the case. But once you've determined that it's a fox, if you look at the very top and you see the shape of V for red or a U for gray, that's how you tell them apart. This particular skull is about eight inches long. If you look at it from the side, you'll see it has this pretty prominent sagittal crest. So the muscles that are stretched down over top of this sagittal crest enable this particular critter to crunch bones uh, meat. Um, and if you look at the eye placement, you'll see that the eyes are facing forward. So this is definitely a predator. And then let's take a look at the teeth. So we've got incisors in the front, very sharp, strong canines. The premolars are pointed. The first molar is pointed. And then the next two on both sides are slightly flattened, which is indicative of an omnivore. This particular omnivore is an eastern coyote. This skull is about five and a half inches long. You turn it on the side, you'll see it's got a real flat top, huge incisors. Eye sockets are on the side, so it's definitely a prey species. Flip it over and take a look at these teeth. You see that the incisors are stained uh, orange, uh, huge, very thick incisors, no canines at all, and the molars are completely flat. So this is definitely a prey species, and this particular one is the beaver. And if you remember what the porcupine looked like, it had these holes right here, also called foramen. And here's an example of the difference between the two. 
a holes on the porcupine and no holes, very solid on the beaver. This particular skull is about four and a half to five inches long. We tilt it to the side and you'll see that it's pretty flat on the top with a pretty prominent sagittal crest. The sagittal crest allows the muscles to expand there and be able to have the, uh, the jaw very, very powerful for breaking bone. If we look at the eyes, they are forward facing. So this is a predator type skull. We flip it over and take a look at the teeth. You notice that there are incisors in the front, canines, and pointy premolars and pointy molars all the way back. So this is obviously a predator skull. In this particular case, the skull is of a fisher. This skull is very, very small. It's only about an inch long. If you look closely, you'll see that the eye sockets are on the side. There's incisors, no canines, and completely flat molars on both sides. This animal is very, very small. It is a herbivore, and this is a white-footed mouse. Okay, this skull is a little bit bigger. You can see it's probably about 11 to 12 inches long. It's got eye sockets that are in the front, so this is definitely a predator. And if you open it up and take a look at the teeth, you'll see that there's incisors in the front, huge canines, premolars that are pointed until you get to the very back, in which they're flattened. So this is a good example of an omnivore. And judging by the size of it, it could really only be one thing, and that is a Pennsylvania black bear. So this segment, I just wanted to show you a little bit between the difference between a growing antler and one that is already grown and is hardened. <clears throat> in a, late April, white-tailed deer will start to grow antlers, and they will start as simply a little bump on the top of the skull, and they will be covered in what we call velvet, which is actually all these little hairs. It looks very, very fuzzy, and it feels very soft like velvet. Uh, so the deer will grow for about four months like this, and then at late August, beginning of September, the blood supply to, the, to all this hair will slow down and will literally be cut off. And what happens is the hair and the tissue will fall off, the deer will rub it off, and eventually it will become what's called hard antler. And so this antler is the fastest growing bone known to man. It grows from nothing on the deer's head to this in four months, which is pretty amazing. This white tail antler then will stay on the deer from September all the way maybe till December, January, February. And then one day when the testosterone level, um, the hormone in the deer's body um, slows down and is greatly reduced, one day these antlers will fall off. Some days they fall off on the same day. Some days it may be, sometimes it may be weeks in between. And then most of the bucks look just like the does until... April, the end of April rolls around and you will start to see a bump on the, the male's head again and this whole process will start, to start over again. This is one of the largest skulls of any mammal that we have in Pennsylvania. When you take a look at the skull, you'll see that the eyes are on the side of the animal's head, which means that it's a prey species. When you take a look at the underside and you look at its teeth, you'll see that it has this hard palate again, similar to a white-tailed deer with no teeth on the front Although there are two holes right here where if this particular animal had those teeth, those are called ivories or tusks, and um, those would be considered canines. They do have six molars. They have three premolars and three molars, and you'll see they're very, very flat because this animal is a herbivore, so it's used for grinding plant material. If you take a look at the lower jaw, and again, this is just one half of the lower jaw, you see it's got the three premolars and three molars in the back. It also has incisors at the very front for nipping off leaves and grass because this animal is primarily a grazer. This is a Pennsylvania elk. This is showing the difference between the male elk with the pedicels here, and these antlers were cut off and the cow elk, which has no pedestals at all, very similar to a white-tailed deer.